My name is Dave Weigel. My uh, occupation is helping companies like Cycles Da Vinci develop their lines of full suspension mountain bikes using some of my designs that I patented. This one in particular is a split pivot design and today I'm going to talk a little bit about what makes a split pivot tick, uh, some of the unique features that we've designed into the line of Da Vinci bikes in 2011 and 2012, and also some of the uh, areas that riders can work on tuning their own personal bikes to make them work better for them. We talked about the three main parts of the split pivot design. The wheel link, which controls how the bike reacts to acceleration. The control link, which controls braking feel and bump feel in the suspension. And the brake link, which floats between the control link and the wheel link, and basically allows the complete separation of braking forces from acceleration and bump forces. One of the great parts about the split pivot, pivot design is even though we're using a single pivot swing arm, it is the best possible single pivot location that we could develop for our intended use. With the Dixon and Dexter, uh, something that we did that was pretty cool was we really wanted to optimize for both two ring and three ring use. So you can run a three ring chain ring, you can run a single ring on here, or you can run a double ring. Um, and we have a lot of adjustability in the rest of the system to allow for the, fine the level of fine tuning that riders are looking for and expect out of a, a boutique level product like the Dixit. The unique thing that we've done with the Da Vinci split pivots is we use a really short control link. With this bike, we're able to do some of the things that I've done on previous suspension designs that I've worked on and get some real curvature change in the leverage ratio. And what that lets us do is get a, a really high level of small bump sensitivity, but at the same point, where that straight rate other suspension type of design will really start blowing into its travel if you're going for a lot of small bump sensitivity, our bike starts to increase, decrease the leverage ratio pretty quickly and we get a lot of mid-travel cornering support. Because the split pivot is taking care of acceleration forces, we don't have to use the low speed compression circuit and the damper as a band-aid to control how the bike reacts to acceleration. And one of the great parts about that is that now we free up the low speed compression circuit, which typically on a lot of other bikes is used to control, to keep the bike from bobbing in its travel or to keep, keep the suspension from moving when the rider's pedaling. Um, we're able to now use this low speed compression circuit as a tuning aid. Uh, and that's great for you people, for you guys that are, you know, if you're a 220 pound guy, you're somebody who really throws their weight around when they pedal. Um, the reality is that your body type, your body shape, your riding style, you're going to need to run more low speed compression. Um, that's, and that's the reality. It's just like you need to run a higher spring rate if you're a heavier guy. Um, and now, because of the layout that we're using and because of the engineering that we've put behind this product, uh, this allows riders to actually now tune their low speed compression just like any high end downhill shock. And that's a great option for, for a wider range of riders. This is Da Vinci's 110 millimeter travel Dexter. Uh, it's a marathon cross country bike. Um, same basic layout as the Dixon design. We use a split pivot. Main pivot location is very similar to where the Dixon is and it's also designed for two ring and three ring use and single rings if you're a really strong rider. Um, split pivot concentric dropout pivot. We have wheel link, brake link, control link. Just like the Dexter, we have a really short, tiny control link so that lets us get a lot of leverage ratio control. Although the leverage ratio on this bike is uh, quite different than the uh, than the Dexter, uh, than the Dixon because it's a cross country bike and the, Dick, the, Dex, the Dixon is a uh, all mountain bike, but uh, you can see we have a lot of movement in that top link and that generates a lot of, a lot of leverage ratio change and uh, that's designed to work with this Fox RP23. Um, and you'll notice also we do have the RP23 Kashima on here. We've been doing a lot of testing on this. I don't know if these shocks are available for the public yet, but uh, they will be on uh, Da Vinci's very soon. So. Um, pretty exciting bike and, uh, and a rocket ship for all you cross-country guys. So on the Dexter and Dixon, which are more the more cross-country oriented and all-mountain oriented bikes, uh, and the Wilson, we have a, a pretty drastically different layout. We still have the three major parts of the split pivot design. We have our concentric dropout pivot that connects our wheel link, which is now in the seat state position, our brake link, which is now in the chain state position, and our control link, which is now pivoting concentric to the bottom bracket. And our shock mounts from this rear pivot on the control link to the frame up here. So all in all the pieces are still the same, but as you can see as I move it through the travel, the way that the geometry works is quite different. One thing to point out is that the brake is actually attached to the brake link here. So even though it looks like it might be attached to the chain stay, to the seat stay and the wheel link, it's actually attached all the way down below on the dropout 
down to the brake link. So as you can see, it separates braking forces by floating the brake link in between the control link and wheel link through these two pivots and gives us the leverage ratios that we're looking for for specific downhill applications. So more progression in the, in the leverage ratio and more end travel bump resistance. One of the cool features I wanted to design into the split pivot on the Dixon, Dexter, and Wilson is a geometry adjust feature. And on this design, it's a really easy thing to accomplish. Basically what we've done is we've incorporated an eccentric pivot on the connection between the brake link and the control link. And you can see that um, it's a pretty simple little part. We just have a small round boss that engages the bearing and an oval boss that engages the frame. And uh, it's real easy to switch. You literally just pop out the pivot, change your geometry, and now we've just gone from a slacker, a slacker lower position down to a steeper higher position. The Wilson, like the Dixon and Dexter, also has a geometry adjust feature. Now I just wanted to show you a little bit about how that works. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, we have an eccentric pivot that connects the wheel link and the brake link in this case. So instead of putting the geometry adjust feature up at the control link to brake link pivot, we're actually putting it at the pivot from the wheel link and the, and the brake link. Assembly and geometry change is really simple. We take our eccentric pivot, insert it into the brake link, and tighten it down with the outside nut. It's that simple. Geometry is now adjusted between low and slack and steep and high.